So I thought we'd revisit <laughs> the hymen. Oh, 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 that drives We're me crazy. We're getting so many questions, um, and lately several from young women who've been the victims of sexual abuse, and they're worried about not having hymens. <laughs> no, the latest one is that she had was abused sexually, and she still has one. Exactly. So I think we need to clear up the hymen quickly. I never had one. Neither did I. Now, the hymen, you're born with a hymen, but it's a, a thin little membrane. Tiny, tiny, little thin, white sheet. And then it breaks open to accommodate menstruation. You could never have a period if you had a hymen. Well, you know but, what I mean? But that's that's the, the medical theory. I think it breaks open when you first ride your bicycle around the block five times. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, or the first time you're, you jump rope and you... I was very athletic, so I mean... Yes, so it was, yes, I know. And it's, and this culture... I guess it's because of the Muslim influence or the, you know, that you have to be... Every religion, it's about the chastity of women. It's about womb guarding. They want to know it's their child. So they want to create these myths so that, you know, people will know if I don't bleed. Most women bleed through their first intercourse because no. of lack of sexual arousal, not because of it's the because It's because the lining has been cut open with... with clumsiness and not enough lube. Yes, and that's what I mean. It's, and, it's lack of arousal. Yeah. It's, it it's, has nothing to do with a real hymen. Worried about it all the time. Obsessed I don't have it. one. I do have one. And then, then they go and get it sewed up and that one doctor said it was like sewing butter. Oh, and they, they reattach the hymen. There are people that have been doing those surgeries. And he said, yeah, it's like sewing butter. There are a small, small percentage of women, like 0.0001% that have to have it surgically, it's very thick, but that is so rare. Rare, very rare. Everyone else, it breaks open yes. <laughs> as a young girl, as yeah. a tween. <laughs> it's totally Well, fun. it's like I, you know, you used your Barbie doll and I penetrated myself with my jump rope head. The Barbie doll leg, not the head, just to be fair, so everyone realizes it wasn't, I didn't put Barbie's head up my snatch. It was the Barbie doll I'm leg. sure it was the head. <laughs> no, what's the Barbie doll like? <laughs> but you should be penetrating. Why should you be penetrating? Uh, I your my take yourself. Would, my take is that we we need to all of us do it ourselves first. But it's why? My body. I know what it feels like. I know when it doesn't feel good. I know to stop and breathe, and I know how to work my pelvic floor muscle. And it's like it's my body, and I want to be the first one to deal with penetration with my first orgasm. I want to know my own body. I can't imagine being penetrated for the first time when I was with another person, the first time having sex, the anxiety oh. I would have had, you know, no, and you're worried about getting pregnant and all of these things all at once. See, I spent two years, the last two years of high school, getting hand jobs from Bob. And he was, oh, delicate touch. And, and every time I, and he was the football captain. <laughs> Little callus on the hands, just a tiny little bit. <laughs> no, not really. No, he had very sweet hands. And he was all over that vulva of mine, you know, exploring it. And I was in heaven. And it, But I had done it before he did. I, I, you know, I had gotten out the mirror when I was 10. I was in there looking at it and seeing what I could get. Because I, yeah. I was, we were told that, where does the baby come from? It comes from the hole in between yeah. your legs. You're curious. And then I, I found out about tampons, and I wanted to know all about that. Oh, and do you remember the first time you tried them? It, oh, it didn't yeah. feel good. No. And think how small a tampon is. <laughs> but your finger feels better because you have, I don't know, more sensation. But I know that mm. it was, what, 8th grade, 7th grade, Peggy and Sue and me, we got together in Peggy's house, and we, had, we bought a box of tampons, and we were going to learn to use them. Now... I didn't menstruate until I was 16. Yeah, I was 12. Mm -hmm. See, big difference. So what grade are you in at 16? I think you're like a junior in high school. I think you're... Oh, junior high. That's, all right, yeah. that's when we did it. Because I had already started menstruating. And uh, we had the tampons. And we were smart enough to put Vaseline on them. You lube them. Yeah. Later on, I would just put them in my mouth and wet. That's what I do, yeah. yeah. Or I did before my Diva Cup. No, I'm and sorry. we were all, the three of us were together, and we were laughing hysterically. Well, but isn't that a beautiful moment? Yes! Three young girls together. Yes. Talking about it. themselves. What does it feel? How does it feel? Oh, I don't like it. Oh, I said, I got it in. Let me, are you sure? How do you know? That's what it should be. <laughs> Not you with some boy in the back of a car in the dark. No, you know. no. So we, that's always that thing of, 
you know, doing it with your girlfriends mm -hmm. or with yourself or with your girlfriends first. When you answer the young woman's question who had been abused and penetrated vaginally and she was worried about her hymen, thinking she still had one, the, the last line of that question really was so beautiful, Betty. And it was, every orgasm you have will yes. heal you from your childhood abuse. Yes. As you reclaim your body for your own pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Every orgasm we have mm -hmm. helps us further along to become a first-class whore. whore. <laughs>